Good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Welcome to Hub's Distracted Driving Webinar, how to, promote, how to Promote Employee Safety and Reduce Your Company Liability. Your speakers today are Steve Bojan, Vice President of Transportation Practice Leader, has over 25 years of fleet experience and transportation management experience. Myself, Scott Fouts, Vice President of Hub South Region, and I've had over 17 years of fleet safety experiment. During the live webinar, all lines will be muted until the end. Uh, then we'll have it open for questions. You may submit all questions or any inquiries electronically to Christine Jacobs at christine.jacobs at hubinternational.com. So a little bit about our agenda today. Uh, the first two sections I will cover over statistics and trends in the commercial auto industry trend, an overview of distracted driving, and then Steve will provide an impact to your organization and prevention, promote employee safety and reduce liability. And then we'll have a Q&A session towards the end. So first, a little bit about the statistics and trends for the commercial auto industry trend. Right now, distracted driving is the number one cause of workplace death. If you think about that in general, those are accidents that can be prevented. Distractions have surpassed alcohol and speeding as a leading factor of fatal and serious injury crashes. Estimated every year, approximately 40,000 people are killed in crashes. Uh, just this year, uh, since the first time in a decade, over 40,000 people uh, were killed in car crashes. Approximately 2.3 million injuries uh, from crashes in 2015. And if you think about that number, 25% of those crashes are attributed to cell phones. And when I say that, those are actually preventable collisions that happen and crashes that can be prevented just from having a no cell phone policy. So what does that mean to you? What's the impact from an insurance standpoint? Well, premiums have gone up as everyone has seen. With a 6% increase of traffic fatality since 2015, a 3% increase in miles driven since 2015, and a 7% increase in crashes, that will ultimately make your insurance premiums go up. My professional opinion, over the next couple of years, you're probably going to see kind of that luxury of having a first dollar uh, possibility. Well, it's probably a luxury most people won't be able to afford just for the fact that issues like distracted driving are going to make insurance premiums rise. So let's talk about some of the trends. It's easy, uh, this is a, a pretty busy slide and we're sourced here at the bottom in case anyone would like to review the actual articles that we provided some of this data. But two or three bullet points actually stick out to me here. Since the economic recovery, uh, 2010, 2011, more people were out on the roads driving. Gas prices are down, more miles will be driven every year. When you look, we looked at last year, as of June 2016, 1.5 trillion miles were driven halfway through the year. That actually beat a record that was from the previous year, 2015, of about 1.54 trillion miles. Now, it's one thing to say, you know, year over year, obviously you're driving more miles, but just think about that number from a distracted driving standpoint. When you think this, uh, in 2016, 25% of all accidents were distracted driving. Think about how many miles are driven every year and folks are distracted. We jump over to the severity side. 42% from a liability standpoint, there's, over the last decade for medical insurance to rise 42%, the coverage, injuries, people that are having to go to hospitals once they're injured, the cost of medical coverage has gone up. And it's just like anything else with reform that's so out there, the idea of medical costs are gonna to continue to rise. And unlike a worker's comp claim where you may have a medical or indemnity loss or a claim for one worker's comp loss, if you had a vehicle that has two or three passengers in it, you're probably going to have two or three liability claims that come out of that. So again, when you do have an automobile accident, more than likely it's going to cost more. The other thing that really sticks out to me on the slide is the 17%. Knowing that physical damage claims for vehicles, it's great that vehicles are manufactured with all the bells and whistles in it, the lane departure, the lights on the, on the side mirrors, uh, the alert systems. It's great that all those vehicles are manufactured with that data in it and all those electronic components in it. But once you get into an accident, the cost to repair those lights, the bells and whistles, the sensors, the costs are astronomical. So you have to think, again, that year over year, as vehicles become more equipped, more adapt, more sensors in it, the cost to repair those vehicles once they're in an accident are going to cost. So next, a little bit about the overview of distracted driving. Connected is distracted. 
you know, when you think about the mental distractions of a rating system, and we actually pulled this from uh, AAA, think about the mild dangers, you know, the engine light, the odometer, the, the speedometer, all the bells and whistles that are in front of you, those actually present a little bit of a mild danger, but they're in a position so you can look down and look back up at the road and just be alerted to it. When you think about the moderate danger, for example, talking on a handheld device, maybe even texting or using some type of, of, of feature on your phone, whether it be an app, GPS, those things become a little bit more, more moderate. And when I say this, how many of you all have been driving, whether it's in your company car or your personal, personal vehicle, and you don't put your cell phone in the exact same spot? Uh, whether it's in your lap, on a console, maybe you actually have something on your dashboard, maybe you put it in the seat next to you. You're constantly having to go to a different place to have, actually have to pick up that cell phone. So it becomes a little bit more of a higher danger just because you're not putting it in the same place. When you think about the high dangers, you think about the things that vehicles are equipped with, texting, uh, Google CarPlay, uh, any type of GPS, some people read their emails on the screen that's in front of them. Again, the more interactive and the more distracted you are, the higher the danger. So we actually covered a couple of those. You think about the visual being the eyes off the road, the mechanical, the hands off the wheel. I think we can all agree those are exposures that you really don't want to happen when someone is driving. But what about the cognitive part? What about taking your mind off driving? I don't think folks really understand that whether you're talking on a cell phone or maybe even a hands-free device, the focus really takes away from the primary idea of trying to drive. And we're gonna talk about the cognitive part of that and really the myth uh, of, of multitasking from a brain standpoint. So a lot of companies out there right now, uh, if they don't have a no cell phone policy or a ban on cell phones, they're going to a hands-free. Um, it's great. I, I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's believed to be safer, uh, but the idea, it, it's, it's the physical part. So you are taking care of the hands on the wheel and the eyes on the road, but it is the cognitive part, you know, the, the, the hands-free standpoint. Uh, most legislations are around that. So our, our, my question to a lot of you that are listening today or may listen to this on demand, you really need to get an understanding of what your distracted driving policy says. If you, and if you don't have one, I would implement one uh, for two reasons. One, you actually want to make sure that you're positioning your firm and your organization to make sure it's, it's aware across the board and cascade out that safety culture to all your drivers that there is a policy in place. The second thing is if there's a no cell phone use policy and drivers are breaking the policy and procedures of your company, that can allow for disciplinary actions, but also allow you to position yourself if there is an accident that you actually had a firm policy in place. Uh, to be honest with you, and I highlighted this at the bottom, Hands-free devices really offer no safety benefit when driving, and I really mean that from a distracted driving standpoint. The cognitive distractions, it's almost like um, your body uh, focuses on the conversation and you're almost listening to a disembodied voice. And I compare that for whenever someone's driving, if you've ever been driving and you've been on your, uh, your, no, your hands-free device, and somebody says, oh, remember the time we did this, or, and they're trying to give you directions, and, and in your mind, you're mentally trying to grasp where you're going. Or they ask you, hey, don't you recall this report that we did? It's one of those things that your mind is having to go back and retrieve data, retrieve information that's in your brain, and you're actually not able to concentrate on the task ahead of you. So let's talk a little bit about multitasking and how that works. And uh, I ask this in all my defensive driver training classes about which part of the, the brain, which lobe, actually controls your driving habits? What actually pushes you to do and react? Uh, the answer is, all four lobes. Uh, there's a frontal, temporal, and central lobe that really allows you to take in the whole picture when you're driving. Uh, and when I say that, things are handled sequentially. So even though your brain is working so fast that you're able to process what street you're going down or what light you're having, you're also understanding the feeling of your car, whether you're driving too fast, whether you're skidding. If uh, maybe you have a flat tire and you feel the vibrations on the vehicle, that's how fast the mind works. But how you process it is always the same, even though it's rapid fire. So if all that, taking into account what it takes to drive, if all of a sudden now you're having to text or you're looking down, uh, the, the, all those things kind of take away and call, start causing that misfire. Greatest example I can give is when, if you can ever remember a time that you've ever been driving, you're going down the road and you're talking on the phone and then you realize you're lost. And the first thing you do is, hey, let me call you right back. I, I need to figure out where I'm at. I think everybody can say that they've done that at least one time. That's your mind flipping a switch from your inattentive blindness to say, hey, I can't keep up. And you're having to shut off a conversation in order to get your bearings to figure out where you're going. And usually you can't remember 
what last crawl street you were on or what street you're on or if you've turned right or left that becomes that myth of multitasking to where your brain has decided you've given me too much information and you're on overload so you heard me say in the pitch and blindness what does that really mean and, and what is that from a cognitive standpoint it's kind of looking but not seeing you know you're 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 there and the way the brain is that we actually talk about this to our drivers uh, during our driver training and will actually be part of our distracted driving campaign two of our webinars that we'll have for, for your drivers will be talking about that cognitive distraction it's great that they're able to see the lights it's great that they're able to see uh, different things from a cross street standpoint and vehicles around them but once you start talking on the phone and you're distracted you really have a hard time remembering and processing and retrieving the information that you've seen so you decrease in visual cues you really not paying attention to red lights or stop signs. That's why you see a lot of intersection collisions and rear end collisions when it comes to distracted driving, the navigational signage and the content of objects. A lot of that kind of comes around at that holistic approach of driving and giving 100% attention to driving. And ultimately, when you think about, you know, 25 to 30% of accidents being attributed to cell phones, all that ends up being preventable because you can actually do away with distracted driving. So a little bit more about attention blindness. <clears throat> if you've ever noticed whenever you're driving, you're talking on a cell phone, you can actually see the picture on the left uh, when not using a hands-free device or when users are using a hands-free device. The idea is like your, your narrowed scope and vision, you're either looking down or away from, from the road. And that becomes the part where you can't go back and recall the intersections or the light that you drove through or maybe a vehicle that you passed. Again, all those kind of come into effect and when you're going 50, 60, 70, 000, 70 miles per hour, the faster rate of speed, it even causes a more narrow spot when it comes to intention blindness. And now we'll turn it over to Steve Bojan. Thanks, Scott, I appreciate that. We're gonna talk about the impact to your organization as we move forward as distracted driving. How does it affect uh, companies and other organizations that have vehicles out on the road? Some of the implications of distracted driving include, obviously, as Scott was talking about, accidents, injuries, fatalities to an employer or another member of the public. As an organization, you have a responsibility to your employees and to the motoring public at large. Um, there's that uh, that, comp, that that unwritten compact to do no harm. And as Scott was saying, you know, 25 to 30 percent of all crashes are attributed to distracted driving. So just think about how much is really there. And these are some of the most serious crashes. Uh, damage to a company reputation can be huge. Um, one only has to think about some recent issues. If we look at uh, a recent crash with an autonomous vehicle and the video that was played about the uh, attendant in the vehicle, and you know, it, it sort of went from, uh, well, we thought it was the other person's fault though. How did this happen and how could somebody be sitting there on their cell phone even in an autonomous vehicle and it really it it hurts the legitimacy it can cause a huge huge damage to reputation or legitimacy of your organization and what you do additional business costs um, there's you know whenever there's a, a small you know we look at the claims run for losses and really uh, that's only the tip of the iceberg as we talk about be there you know any crash can include business interruption loss of key people obviously increased insurance rates are a critical part of this as, as we all know that rates are going up and when you have a couple of serious crashes insurance carriers start looking and saying is this somebody I want to work with in the future um, reduced employee productivity is another one in terms of you know crashes happen people are hurt they're not able to be as productive in the future and then I think last one is that legal actions and fines we're starting to see employee people who are who are involved in distracted driving crashes um, be put in jail um, companies can get fines if you look at the DOT fines for distracted for uh, use of a handheld of uh, handheld use of a, uh, of a Commercial vehicle driver using a handheld device, excuse me, um, it's a, a 2400 to the driver and up to $11,000 fine to the company for each occurrence. It's huge. 
So we move on to talk about the broad range of exposure. You know, it, we all, you know, many of us think that it's very limited, but really it's 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 quite broad in terms of when an organization is exposed to distracted driving losses. You know, the obvious during work, you know, for employees driving during work hours, um, but also during non-typical work hours, if there's a situation uh, where somebody's answering a text or an email for work. Um, we're going to look at a couple of case studies here in, 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 a, in a couple of slides, and it's really going to kind of show that it's not as cut and dried as many of us think. And then we look also at employer-provided vehicles. Um, really, any time that vehicle is being driven, the employers has a level of liability associated with it, and there has to be some controls in place uh, for those employees or other drivers of the vehicles, of those employer-owned vehicles. And, you know, we talk about, obviously, business and personal conversations at the bottom. Um, the, the level of liability for us and our employees is huge. So let's look at a first case study, an electrical contracting company. Each of these case studies is for a different industry, um, which really is showing that this isn't focused just on, on over-the-road trucking or construction or even um, you know, a professional sales force. Every, one, every industry in the United States, almost every organization is affected by the scourge of distracted driving. In this case with the electrical contractor, company, it was a $4.1 million loss in 2006. Um, the employee was lost and using a global positioning system on a cell phone while driving a uh, company van. He ran through a red light, broadsiding another vehicle, and seriously injuring a 70-year-old woman. In this situation, how many of us can go and think that we got lost and you were using Google Map or Waze or some other type of, of positioning of mapping system to find a place and we're paying attention um, to what was going on and and we kind of lost sight just like Scott was saying that inattention blindness and I can think myself really it, it's a challenge in that we really need to know we're going on pay attention to what's going on the road um, and it, it's not always a cell phone I mean we've gone from the Tom Tom and the Garmin now to the cell phone so there's all kinds of, of of, of uh, cognitive distractions while driving. So this is a good example of knowing where you're going and limiting the distraction and focusing on the driving task at hand. And the next study is a construction company in Georgia where there was a $5 million loss, a little older, but again, uh, reached over the hand to to grab it to look at his hand his mounted handheld free cell phone provided by his employer to get a message, and, and, and hit a stationary sedan in front of him and stopped to turn left. Um, in this situation, not only do we have a situation uh, where the employee was using a cell phone, but it looks like he was returning a message from the employer. Um, in this case, the employer was saying he was commuting to and from work, but the reality is a cell phone was provided by the company, and as I just stated, he was, you know, it was a work-related activity. The employer was, uh, the settlement was $4.75 million, a part of it was $4.75 million. Obviously, the employee had the other part. Um, so another key thing, and we'll talk about this when we talk a little bit more about solutions is, not only do we have to educate our employees and about distracted driving and uh, prevent them from doing it, but also from our management staff to let our employees know, you know, to not be contacting, calling our employees while they're on the road or instructing our supervisors. Sometimes you have to wait for a message from an employee that he shouldn't just be calling back right away. As we look at the next uh, case study, where we have a, a trucking company, a commercial motor carrier, this is a twenty, almost a twenty-five million dollar loss. It was over twenty-five million actually when you include all of the claims, uh, where there was a fatality, some serious injuries, uh, one serious injury, and then fifteen somewhat minor injuries. The you know a driver tra of a tractor trailer was checking his 
phone for text messages when he ran into 10 vehicles that had stopped up in tra- that stopped and, and backed up traffic on the on the freeway um it's it's not uncommon you know when i when i've been, when i've been involved with crash situations in the past where a driver says i looked up i looked down whether it was a, my cell phone to grab a cup of coffee or something else and i looked up and traffic was at a stop and i couldn't stop my vehicle in time and so it's really important that we again educate our employees and and all of our all members of our organization they could be supervisors that um distracted driving is a huge it, it, it's not acceptable and when we talk about distractions um we can also throw in eating drinking and other activities that take our eyes and our mind off the road we look here 18 million dollars was awarded to uh, a survivor who had serious brain injuries unfortunately this person perished um three years after the crash um and then six million to a family of of one of the deceased. So it's the cost. This again, as Scott had talked about earlier, are huge, and it's important that everybody understands that these things really do happen, and it's not to the other guy. We look at a um, twenty-one million dollar uh, settlement for a soft drink beverage company that happened in Texas. The company driver, who happened to be a salesperson was talking on a hands-free headset in compliance. It wasn't compliance. Her company did have a policy which allowed hands-free use while driving, and she struck another vehicle broadside. And one of the reasons this verdict was so high is during the trial, the uh, driver stated that she didn't realize that distracted driving, even hands-free, was such a big problem that that really wasn't communicated to her as part of the training. Obviously, this was a very tough area of the country for trials, and the jury held the company liable, uh, and, and there included punitive damages, which led up to the $21 million um, verdict. The last one uh, we're going to talk about, the last case study, is for uh, a law firm, and I know that everybody on the call loves lawyers, but we had a lawyer talking on her cell phone when she struck and killed a 15-year-old girl in a hit-and-run crash. The attorney, she didn't see the pedestrian. Supposedly, she thought she had hit a deer. Her firm settled the claim for an undisclosed amount, and the jury ordered the the attorney herself to pay about $2 million in damages. And she was tried uh, criminally for, for this, for this hit-and-run crash and served a year um in on work release it's you know one of the reasons this was such a big claim is a big part of her billing was giving legal advice while she was on her cell phone in transit and how many of our folks including myself get calls while we're on the road we think of this as dead time when it really isn't and that's something to be thinking about you know we are on the road you know we this is not a time to be double billing, this is a time to be really focusing on the driving task at hand. And as, as you can see, as looking in, on these last few slides, most of these came from the National Safety Council, and they have a multitude of examples that we can give to our drivers, to our employees, to understand how serious this problem is and what a risk it is to our to our organization and to these employees themselves. As we move forward talking about your organization, um, you know, some other addition, uh, recent litigation was um, $21.6 million loss to a delivery company and a $16 million loss to a sales company. So the numbers are just staggering, and insurance carriers are very much taking notice of this. You know, we think of, of, of looking at, you know, what's leading to some of these huge verdicts and they keep getting bigger is does your organization have a cell phone use or handheld cell phone policy while driving you know how is it written do people know about it and do you know if your employees are following it you know it's great to have a cell phone policy and say we're not going to talk on our cell phones while driving you need to pull over to a safe place and then to call your driver who's out on the road 
you need to know if your fo- employees are following it, pay attention to them when they're out on the road. If you see them and if they're talking on a handheld cell phone, let somebody know. And is it being enforced and or encouraged? What that really is talking about, what we're talking about here is we want to make sure that um, we don't have supervisors calling employees when they're out on the road and then getting mad at them for not calling back within a couple of minutes. Um, you know, we want to be saying, you know, please, you know, are you in a safe place to speak? Are you out on the road? I'll call you back later. Um, not texting drivers when they're out on the road um, and making sure we're not getting a return text. Or as Scott was talking about earlier, that voice-activated texting and cell phone. I mean, I see it so often, and for many people, it's they don't realize that the risk is just as or is almost as great as when they're sitting there with their thumbs punching in the letters. So let's move forward to talking about prevention, which is really where we want to go. You know, we want to promote employee safety and reduce liability. You know, an education and, and awareness um, campaign is critical. People need to know what the risk is and understand um, that what they're doing can affect them for the rest of their lives. Um, too often, we, you know, as we'll get to soon, people think of the phone as an extension of the, themselves. They don't realize that when they're talking on a phone, that when they're distracted, they're reducing their, their window of vision. There needs to be a company policy. It needs to spell out what exactly the restrictions are for use of cell phones while driving. It needs to make sense to the organization. You know, it's, it's great to say we're not gonna, we are gonna have nobody talk on cell phones or use a uh, cell phone device while driving. And yet we need our employees to be talking hands-free at various times. You know, there's legislation in law enforcement. 30, as we'll see again in a couple slides, many states have restrictions on the use of cell phones while driving. Law enforcement um, is really working harder at, uh, you know, at, 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 at giving tickets and, and enforcing the laws. And we will talk a little bit also about some of the technologies that are available to prevent this uh, use of cell phones while driving. So we'll start with widespread education and awareness. You know, we live in a culture where communication has moved to mobile application and people don't know how to live without their devices. Um, company policies need to communicate formally and regularly. So going from there, let's talk a little bit about the distracted driving policies that many organizations have. Um, some policies will include handheld and hands-free, you know, use of handheld versus hands-free devices, that you can speak hands-free, that there is no texting while driving, that you can't put any data into your phone or into your vehicle. I think Scott mentioned there are now vehicles with heads-up displays that almost look like a, a Wii or some kind of, 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 of other uh, video game system so that we, we're not doing that, that we're really focusing on the road. And really the policy needs to include all employees not just people out on the road, but senior management when they're out on the road, because oftentimes they are some of the biggest culprits of the, of the use of, of um, cellular communication devices while out on the road. Um, it needs to be for all vehicles and all work-related communications. You know, uh, even when, you're, when you have, like we saw the lawyer talking on a cell phone on her own, what seemed to be her own time, we need to make sure that everyone understands that that isn't your time at that moment. And while I can't necessarily tell you what to do in your own vehicle on your own time, um, if it's company related, we need to not be using our cell phones. And then we have some companies that have gone to an entire cell phone ban. Employees are not to use a cell phone unless they're pulled over on, in a safe location. And that, seems, that is obviously the best policy, but with any of these policies, it needs to work within your organization and what's enforceable. So again, as we go to the next slide and look at distracted driving company policy, um, texting is prohibited. That's like uh, table stakes at this point, and it should be addressed in both uh, either a specific policy or an overall company safety policy, and it needs to be, you know, very identifiable. You know, these, as I just mentioned before, 
alternative use, pulling over to a safe location and making a call or making a text or sending an, e an email is huge. When people know that this is promoted, they're much more likely to do it. Um, employees must ab ab acknowledge and obey the policy, um, need to sign off on this policy. They need to, employees need to understand that text logs are easy to treat, retrieve and that the, both the company will do it if they suspect that people are texting or using a handheld device on company time. And management needs to make sh regularly communicate the policy and make sure that people understand what some of the uh, state laws are and, and, you know, that not only is this a company policy, but that, you know, we need to be in compliance with uh, local and state regulations, uh, much like we've done with seatbelt use. And, and, and seatbelt use um, is now by all drivers, by people in vehicles is over 90% compliant. And that's because of that combination of company and government rules and understanding how they work together. And speaking of government rules, as we look at legislation and law enforcement, here's some of the uh, issues that we see. Obviously, OSHA, as part of the general duty clause, um, can, can um, if there are a number of injuries related to distracted driving, can cite a company, and they would do this under the ANSI Z15 standard, um, the 2017 update, which discusses uh, the use of cell phones while driving. And this is an international standard, not just the United States, but Canada and the rest of the world has adopted these ANSI standards. So it really is, this is a, an international problem. And in the United States, um, additionally, the Federal Motor Carry Safety Administration for commercial motor vehicles, handheld use of a cellular device by a driver is prohibited and again as I mentioned fines of 2400 to the driver and 11,000 to the company are possible and there are already 30 states that have a prohibition on use of handheld cellular devices so there are a lot of uh, prohibitions but yet we see it um, regularly um, if you were to go to California where they have some of the toughest distracted driving laws and you were to go down to 405 it's amazing how many people are on their cell phones or or some form of tablet or other uh you know device that or cellular communication device that is is causing them not to be paying attention to what's going on on the road in Canada all 10 provinces have regulations restricting the use of handheld cellular devices and in Brit both British Columbia and Saskatchewan commercial drivers cannot use handheld or hands-free devices. So they've really kind of gone a step further in, in Western provinces of Canada. It's important that we encourage companies to follow, that we encourage all our drivers to follow these. As we move forward to talk about, uh, from an engineering standpoint, anti-distracted driving technology, um, there are a number of opportunities right now. Fleet mode, which is a provider of uh, prevents the use of cell phone while the vehicle is uh, by, while the vehicle is moving by the use of a Bluetooth connected sensor on the vehicle and an app in the phone. So it, this is a great technology um, that moves that a lot that forces somebody not to be able to use a cell phone forces the driver not to be able to use a cell phone while driving. Apple and some other phone manufacturers are talking about putting locks on mobile devices while they're in motion in in the next couple of years, the driver would need to override this lock or this app uh, to, to, to be able to use a cell phone while driving as these companies are now being brought into some of the litigation for self, you know, for crashes involving cell phones. And many new vehicles uh, have, you know, the, 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 disp disp the dashboard displays that are quite distracting, but they do have locks available so that drivers can't access the technology while driving. And what does this mean for you as a, within your organization? Employers, you need to protect your employees and, re, and, and reduce liability for the organization. <clears throat> you know, if you expect your employees to use their, their phones while driving, um, this creates a huge risk to, for employees to being involved in a crash. As Scott discussed, um, 
use of a cell phone while driving increases your likelihood of being in a crash by two to four times. You know, employers are responsible for ensuring their employees adhere to applicable regulations, both federal, local, and state. You know, they must understand uh, the exposure of legal liability. And it's, at some point, it's where we get to at the bottom here, vicarious liability, you know, you in a, as an employer, you can be held accountable for negligent employee actions if the employee was acting within his or her employment at the time of the crash. And how can we at Hub help you? It's important that everyone understand at Hub, we take distracted driving very seriously. It's We view this as one of the biggest problems for our biggest crises in our country in terms of keeping our workers, employees safe and also keeping the motoring public free of crashes. You know, any organization that has any type of fleet or people driving for work needs to have a distracted driving policy. The distracted driving policy you create has to be workable and enforceable. Don't create a policy where drivers cannot use their phone while driving but need to answer their cell phone if a supervisor calls. You need to be able to enforce the policy, create something that will apply to everyone without exception. And I do apologize. Uh, we're having a little bit of a technical difficulty where I'm on the next slide as when you get the deck, um, here we go, how can help help? Um, education of distra on distracted driving is critical. Drivers and never believe these things can happen to them. So it's really important that we continue to educate. Um, some of the things, hub, your hub risk consultant and other account executives can provide are sample policies and training materials to support your distracted driving program. Um, giving you talking points for discussions uh, and having discussions about best practices and vendors to use to reduce risk. A good example is fleet mode that I was just talking about, where they have a, uh, a product that will basically elim you know, eliminate the use of a company um, given phone to drivers while the vehicle's in motion. And then training for drivers and managers about the risks associated with distracted driving and how to conduct operations so that this is not an issue. Again, a, a key thing is to uh, educate your dispatchers and operations managers don't expect people to contact you while they're driving. If you have a truck driver that's out on the road going between, you know, uh, Chicago and St. Louis or anywhere in the country where there's a 300 mile distance and they're driving direct, don't expect them to contact you within those six hours if you have a question. Um, you know, we need, just like we used to do pre-cell phone, we need to make sure that that communication occurs before and after the trip. Um, we're, and we're open constantly to working with clients for, you know, with new, new ideas and to open the eyes of, uh, of your employees as to what needs to be done. Um, we'll now move on to questions. Uh, I think I have a couple already. Um, are there applications, and, and Scott, I think is going to answer most of these. So are there applications and technology in the market to help reduce distracted driving? Absolutely. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, actually, there's a lot of uh, different applications and mechanism and technology that's out there. Uh, we're actually partnered uh, with a vendor called Fleet Mode. Uh, it's basically an app that's downloaded to the phone, and it works off GPS. So once the vehicle is actually in motion, it actually shuts down the entire phone. So you can't call. It cannot receive calls. Um, you can't text, you can't go into any other type of applications uh, while the vehicle is in motion. Uh, there's definitely a lot of other technology out there, Lifesaver, AT&T actually have a drive, AT&T has a drive mode uh, that's, that's happening. I think uh, Steve and I were talking about last week that uh, even uh, the iPhone is actually coming out, uh, Apple is coming out with some type of uh, device or application on it that actually shuts down the phone when the vehicle's in motion. So I think going forward, you're actually gonna see that, uh, not just uh, from a phone that's already built in, whether it be an Apple or Samsung or whatever you're using from an iOS system, uh, but there is that technology out there that that's, it probably ranges between five and $10, depending on uh, what vendor you go with, but there's definitely technology out there that helps shut down, down the phone while the vehicle's in motion. Okay. 
What are uh, second question is what are other statistics out there on distracted driving outside of fel cell phone use? Yeah, I think, well, obviously you touched on a couple. I think, you know, when you think about being two to four times more likely to be in a crash, you know, when using a cell phone, I think it's 23 times more likely when you're texting. Um, I always laugh. There's there's a stat in there that's uh, three times more likely when you're grooming. I don't know how many times I see people going down the road, either fixing their hair uh, or their uh, mustache or putting on makeup or what have you. You know, they're looking in their rearview mirror at themselves grooming. Um, two times more likely when you're eating. Uh, and it's not really maybe uh, eating and looking down at your food, but uh, I've had a lot of instances where people drop you know, hot coffee in their lap or drop a bottle of water on the, on the floor and they're reaching after it. Anything that's kind of taking your eyes off the road. Uh, with those statistics in mind, one thing to think about is 31 out of 50 states right now really do not have a way of tracking uh, distracted driving. When I say that, it's just a box. So when the police show up, they may mark distracted driving cell phones but it really doesn't get at the root cause. They're, they may say it's distracted driving, but maybe it was eating or grooming, or they were trying to get something out of their seat or looking back to get some paperwork out of the back seat, uh, or maybe even talking to another passenger. Uh, I think as legislation comes around and keeps tracking in this direction, I think as you're finding a lot of carriers uh, and their loss control reps that are really looking at the data and analysis, I think their claims handling will, will probably get more in-depth on their analysis about distracted driving. I think you're going to see more and more uh, statistics and details being able to come out with that. Uh, but right now, when you talk about you know some of the stats are out there, that's really the only breakdown we have, really, you know, basically cell phone, texting, grooming, and eating. And uh, we have a few more. This is a, a great that we are getting so much feedback. Where can I get samples of hands-free policies? So there are a lot of different samples out there. Some of our, our fleet team and, uh, under Steve's uh, supervision have been able to develop uh, not just uh, the disciplinary actions and policy and procedures about you know having cell phones, uh, but kind of that full distracted driving policy that's not just around uh, cell phones, but maybe the technology that's in the vehicle or the cab. Uh, the food policy, uh, smoking policy, whatever it might be. There's a lot of different things and facets when it comes to distracted driving. So we definitely have some sample policies. We have samples uh, that also require the employee acknowledgement, which we keep talking about. And I think uh, Steve kind of drove, drove through with, uh, with the employer liability is that we want to make sure that the drivers are signing off on this, that it's been reviewed with them, that they're acknowledging what their roles and responsibilities are when they're driving. So ultimately, you want to have kind of a fail-safe, all-encompassing distracted driving policy. But we can definitely help you provide that if you want to reach out to your local hub consultant uh, or if you want to reach out to us, we're more than happy to, to kind of provide the information. Great. Is there any data about GPS use where you're getting turn-by-turn -turn information? Is, it worse, is that worse than being lost statistical-wise? <laughs> Let me get this right. Uh, can you can you can you rephrase yeah, the question? Or can you answer? <laughs> well, why don't I'll I'll take this one. Uh, <laughs> this is a lot of words here. So yes, there there really isn't a lot of data about uh, about crashes involving a Tom Tom or a Garmin or even the uh, um, the use of, of uh, Google Maps, for example. Um, you know, it, 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 as Scott really has mentioned, um, it's kind of put under that that broad umbrella of distracted driving but as many of us have seen and the the most for many of these different types of, of distractions it's almost anecdotal but it, it is definitely there as we saw in a couple of our case studies um, when people get lost um, in that turn by turn information the problem today is um, and, and you know I've experienced this myself when you watch somebody suddenly go across three lanes of traffic because you know you can just tell that he's following directions and, and the uh, turn left at, at, at Smith Street came very late. Um, it's really important that our folks know that they kind of know where they're going. I mean, we live in a generation where, you know, people used to know how to get from, you know, their house to the office or to, you know, to, to grandma's. Now they just, they put the address in Google Maps and, you know, they're oblivious for, for 25 minutes. Um, it's a cultural change. So um, I would say, yes, it is worse than being lost statistical wise. I think it really, the, the biggest thing we can educate people when they use these um, directional devices is that if you can't get in a lane to make a turn, don't cut in front of somebody, go get off the highway, come back around. 
Um, it's not worth having a rear end collision because you need to make a, a right hand turn. And that's really, again, goes back to that education and awareness campaign. Um, the next question um, would be, uh, we had a question about the GPS app for shutting down phone use while driving. Scott? Yeah, you're asking about, is, are there GPS apps that shut down the phone? Yes. Is that what the question was? Yes. Yeah, there, again, there's, yeah there, again, there's a lot of technology out there, uh, whether it's already built into the phone. Um, we have several vendors that we would recommend, like a fleet mode that we're partnered with, that if you're a hub client, uh, they actually provide preferred pricing uh, for those clients. Uh, the good thing is, if you already provide uh, smartphones to your drivers, um, you know, it, the application is very easy. It's actually downloadable to, to a, and from an app standpoint. And then there's just a, a small strip that actually goes inside the windshield of the vehicle. Uh, but usually the cost of that uh, is, is, is zero. It's free. Uh, it's just that ongoing service from month to month. And again, depending on which vendor that you would go with, it can range from anywhere from six to ten dollars. Um, and at the same time, it really doesn't give you that telematics. I, I want to be clear. There's a big difference between kind of the GPS and shutting down the application uh, versus telematics where you're getting the driver behavior uh, and some of the statistical data about their driving habits. So it's it's kind of an apples and oranges conversation. So I just want to be clear when we're talking about the distracted driving applications and what those are, that's really just shutting down the phone and, and then providing a GPS component to it. Um. Absolutely, and, and we're working closely with Fleet Mode, which is one of the premier providers of that technology, um, and, and we'll work with any type of phone, you know, both the Apple and the Androids. Um, next question is, we hear about food and phone distractions. How about the prevalent use of CB radios in the trucking industry? I'll let you answer that one. That's your link. <laughs> okay. So, Yes, the CBs are being used still. It is a distraction. It is it is not uh, restricted. CB and two-way radio use uh, is not restricted while driving. Uh, the uh, old-style cell phone with the um, uh, uh, with the little push button is, but the CB is not. And I, it, it's. Because of the fact that the drivers are more still involved in the driving task, it's not quite as big a problem from a, a distraction standpoint as uh, cell phone use, but it, it is a distraction both physically and mentally, like Scott had talked about earlier. You know, if you're sitting there jamming on the cell phone, talking where you're pressing uh, the button on the speaker, uh, that's a hand you do not have on the gear shifter. So it's important that we limit it as much as possible. Um, are there other devices to communicate to a driver instead of issuing a cell phone? In other words, dis discouraging drivers from use of a cell phone? Um, in this case, there there are, but the challenge is, I mean, we can go back to the old pagers and things like that, but if drivers are going to be looking at these devices while they're driving, um, then it's really the same result. Uh, it, it, it comes down to, you know, putting, you know, keeping your eyes on the road and hands on the wheel and not paying attention to these other devices. Um, you know, and when you hear the clicking on your phone while you're going down the road, not picking it up, uh, you know, I think it, it, it's, it's, it's training our, our, ourselves, our, our, our kids and our employees, um, you know, which is more important. And it, it's, it's, it's a hard thing to do. Steve, um, I'll, I'll add to that. There's a lot, there's a lot of uh, things out there right now. Again, we talk about whether it's cell phone or like a two-way radio or CB. There's actually uh, some court lawsuits and litigations out there right now where people that knew the other f person was driving. So if I knew that Steve was driving down the road and I got his reply back out of office or, hey, I'm driving right now. And I continue to call and text and call and text until I finally get him on the phone. Uh, and all of a sudden there's an accident or some type of distracted driving to where they hit someone else. Uh, they're finding out where they're tracing those logs back and their text back. And they're going after the person that was trying to track them down. So when you think about you as the employer or you as a supervisor, um, there you were, it's a known exposure. You know, it's a known thing that they were driving and you kept trying to get in contact with them. So again, you're kind of adding to the, to the fire a little bit. Uh, 
um, whenever you're taking away from their 100% attention from the road. So just want to make anyone that's uh, on the webinar right now aware they are paying attention to those logs uh, also whenever you can't try to keep following up trying to get your driver's attention. And the next question, we have two more. Uh, how should we use a GPS system? Well, it depends on it depends on how yeah I would say it depends on what your operation is and what your industry is and, and probably your geographical area. So I think you know when you think about your if you're using uh, kind of this telematics such as a fleet mode to uh, follow your drivers and GPS, especially if you're thinking like a geo net like a fencing type thing uh, to track where your drivers are going to and from. It's definitely a, a very economical uh, way to do that, and it has the benefit of distracted driving. And uh, to follow on that, I think um, if we're using, if we have employees using a GPS, um, you know, using a GPS to get to, uh, to a customer location where they don't know where they're going, it's a good, I mean, we're all going to be doing this, there's no doubt, or many of us, well, I shouldn't say all, but having some level of familiarity where they're going and not just going blind and relying completely on the GPS as on a turn by turn basis is very helpful. Um, when you kind of have an idea of where you're going and you're and you can kind of plan ahead a little bit is, is incredibly helpful. Um, so giving people some direction before they leave and then obviously using the GPS to augment that is, is totally acceptable, but we don't want them to be driving blind, so to speak. Um, and then I think our last question is uh, well, we have two more. I take that back now. What determines a safe place to pull over? I'll, I'll, I think that all comes down to judgment, but I would think anything off the roadway, um, not being able to be hit by oncoming traffic or traffic from behind you. So when you say safe place, it's an area where they're free from exposure. So whether it's off the road, road or highway uh, or to a position where they're stopped, and able to give 100% attention to speaking or talking or texting on the phone versus concentrating on driving. Uh, but again, that'll, that'll always come down to judgment depending on location where the road. So for example, if you're in the city streets and uh, you're downtown in a large metropolitan area, it might not as easy, be as easy to get off the side of the road or to get somewhere where they can get parked. But my recommendation would be get to be somewhere where you can be parked legally uh, in an area where you're not uh, impeding traffic uh, and at the same time being able to give 100% attention to the conversation versus the road. Absolutely. Steve? Yep, I agree wholeheartedly. And our last question is, thanks to the FMCSA, we have another distraction in commercial motor vehicles uh, called electronic logging devices. What are we to do about <laughs> that? And that's a good question. Um, drivers are paying attention you know, to their to their hours of service. Um, I think it's plan a lot of it comes down to planning ahead, understanding your hours, and um, you know making sure that our drivers know that safety comes before uh, those last three minutes of their uh, of their time on the road. Um, and it really, how to use the ELD effectively is, is the key part of this. I know it's a frustration of many um, of many commercial motor fleets. So, and this is an area where you can work with. Uh, your hub risk consultant to talk about how to educate drivers. Um, that's all the questions we have. Uh, we want to thank everybody for their participation, for being on this webinar today. Uh, we believe that this is a critical subject. The webinar will be available um, coming up in uh, the next couple of days. And Scott, I believe there are going to be a couple of podcasts also that will be available through hub um, as, as well as other tools of the over the course of april which is distracted driving month absolutely so we're running a hub distracted driving campaign uh throughout the month uh there'll be a couple on-demand driver webinars that talk about kind of that myth the multitasking talk about reaction time uh distraction time and things like that so those will be on demand it'll be actually on our landing page uh along with other bulletins blogs and videos so um, you know, we try to treat, treat a lot of our materials to be able to use throughout the year because uh, distracted driving, you know, it's an awareness month for the month of April. It happens all year round. So our landing page will actually provide a lot of this content. Uh, we talk about sample policies, procedures, and programs. 
We'll have a couple sample policies on there. But again, if you have something in particular you're looking for or have a special request, you're more than welcome to, to reach out to our fleet team or your local hub uh, consultant. Uh, towards the end of the month, uh, we'll be talking about some technology and app solutions and probably we'll put something out uh, maybe in Q2, uh, early Q3 to talk about fleet mode. One of our partnered vendors actually coming on board and uh, showing some of their capabilities, services and solutions when it comes to distracted driving. And then uh, ultimately, uh, we'll be rolling out hopefully our hub defensive driver training program, uh, which will be kind of a set up like a train the trainer for managers uh, for drivers. So we'll actually have a formal uh, defensive driver training program that will ultimately probably be towards the end of Q2. Uh, but ultimately, the idea here is to provide uh, some resources, not just around distracted driving, uh, but to help support uh, you as a manager, a supervisor, ops person, whatever your role is and within your organization. You're our front line of defense uh, with the drivers, you're the, your eyes and ears. So, you know, as we can produce and develop materials that help support you and your role, uh, we're more than happy to do that as, uh, as your broker. All Steve, right, well, again, turn it over to you. Thank you very much to everyone who participated. And very much a thank you to Scott Fouts, who has been spearheading our distracted driving campaign here at Hub, along with Tiffany McConnell. And uh, let's be safe out there. Have a safe day, everybody. Thank you.